Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be discussing therapeutic drug monitoring as a part of our clinical chemistry lecture series. All right, let's get started. Therapeutic drug monitoring, or TDM, is when a patient's blood is tested to get a measurement of a specific therapeutic medication. These concentrations allow the physician to ensure that the patient is getting the correct dosing of the medication in order to have the greatest benefit and the least number of adverse effects of the drug. TDM tests are regularly done in a laboratory, and it's critical for medical laboratory professionals to understand why TDM testing is important, as well as the therapeutic uh, drug's purpose for the patient. A pharmacological effect is the intended beneficial outcome of a specific medication. So for example, if a patient has a high blood pressure and is given a blood pressure medication, that medication's pharmacological effect is lowering the blood pressure. A therapeutic range of a medication is the concentration of that medication present in the blood that produces the pharmacological effect. A steady state is when the amount of drug put into the body equals the amount of drug that is being eliminated. This means that the concentration of the drug will remain the same in the body after the body is given the drug at a constant rate. So why might a physician request a TDM on a patient? Some medications have a very narrow therapeutic range. So for example, medication uh, with concentrations slightly higher than the therapeutic range could have adverse effects. TDMs may also be ordered if the patient is on multiple medications that may interact with one another. Sometimes the pharmacological effect is not seen in the patient and the doctor will order a TDM on the drug to verify that the correct amount of medication is being prescribed. Also, some patients just may not be taking their prescription. TDMs on patients will show the physician if they are non-compliant with their medication. Pharmacokinetics is the study of how drugs pass through the body. It includes how a drug is absorbed, distributed, metabolized, and excreted. And we'll talk about each of these in the uh, coming slides here. There are various ways a drug, can, a drug can be absorbed in the body. The medication can be given as an oral dose, inhaled, or through a transcutaneous patch. Medication can also be injected intravenously, so uh, through a vein, which is uh, also called IV, or intramuscular through a muscle, or IM. Doses can also be given rectally via suppository. So in the previous slide, I mentioned that drugs can be taken orally. This administration has factors associated with it. If a drug is a weak acid, it's best absorbed in the stomach, whereas if it is a weak base, it is best absorbed within the intestines. Liquid me medications are absorbed much more quickly than those in the solid pill form. Pharmacists and physicians need to consider the medication interactions with food in the stomach. Some medications must be taken with food and others on an empty stomach. Every drug must pass something we call the first pass effect. First pass effect is the term used for hepatic metabolism of a drug, so liver metabolism, uh, when absorbed and delivered through portal blood. The, the first pass effect will be considerably more significant for the oral route since there the drug will face organs expressing high levels of biotransformation enzymes before reaching the systemic circulation. The greater the first pass effect, the lesser the amounts of the drug that will reach the systemic circulation in the body. Due to age, patients may have variations in the rate of metabolism or breakdown of medications. Newborns clear drugs from their systems very slowly, whereas infants and children clear them quickly. Geriatric patients generally clear drugs slowly due to reduced kidney and liver function, body mass, and protein concentrations. The primary route of excretion of drugs is through the kidney. Secondary routes of drug excretion include sweat, expired air, saliva, bile salts, and mammary glands. A drug half-life is the time it takes the drug concentrations in the blood to be reduced by half. Each medication has its own specific half-life, 
However, in general, it takes about four to five half-lives in order to be completely eliminated from the body. The steady state of a drug, of course, these are all this. I feel like this presentation has a lot of definitions. Uh, the steady state of a drug is a desired state where the amount of drug put into the body equals the amount being eliminated by the body. It takes about four to five half lives of the drug after dosing of it uh, begins. So when discussing medications, the terms peak and trough levels are talked about frequently. The peak level of a medication is where the highest level of drug is in the body. This varies between each drug type. The trough level of a medication is the lowest amount of drug in the body. A serum or plasma sample is usually sufficient for most drugs. However, whole blood must be used for cyclosporin and tacrolimus tests. When collecting a specimen for a TDM test, timing of the draw is absolutely critical. TDM can be a, a random draw, meaning it can be collected at a random time of the, of the day. A TDM peak level must be collected as directed, usually one hour after a dose of the medication is given. A TDM trough level must be drawn immediately before the next dose of the medication is given. Currently, amino assays for each individual drug are the most common testing types for TDMs in the clinical laboratory. Uh, these methods have quick turnaround time, are relatively inexpensive, and have good sensitivity. Chromatography can also be used for TDMs. This method is very sensitive, takes longer than amino assay methods, and is much more expensive. Chromatography is usually used for measuring the drug and its metabolites. There are a variety of classes of drugs. For the purpose of this course program and for the passing of Board of Certification Examination for MLT and MLS students, you need to know each class of drug, the drugs in these classes, and also significant things about these drugs. So these classes are cardioactive, antiepileptic, bronchodilators, antibiotics, psychoactive, immunosuppressants, and chemotherapeutic drugs. Digoxin is a cardiac glycoside that is derived from the digitalis purpurea plant. It is used for patients that have congestive heart failure or have heart arrhythmias, which is an abnormal heartbeat. Digoxin helps to strengthen the force of the myocardium's contractions. If a patient has a low potassium or magnesium level, this strengthens digoxin's actions. So this is why knowing a patient's digoxin level is important. So if the patient has a low potassium level, a lower dose of digoxin will be needed. Other cardioactive drugs include lidocaine, procanamide, propranolol, and quinidine. Lidocaine is an anesthetic used in patients that have ventricular fibrillation. And this is when the ventricles flutter due to ineffective flow of the blood in the heart. Procanamide is another anesthetic used in patients to prevent arrhythmias or irregular beats of the heart. Propanolol is a cardioactive drug that slows down a patient's heart rate. It also helps to reduce a patient's blood pressure. Quinidine is an antiarrhythmic medication that is used to help patients correct their atrial fibrillation. Antiepileptics are a class of drug used for the prevention of seizures. Carbamazepine or Tegretol is an anticonvulsant medication that can also cause leukopenia. And leukopenia, you'll learn in hematology, is a lowered white blood cell count. It also can uh, cause liver dysfunction as a side effect. Patients who are on uh, carbamazepine uh, often have complete blood counts or CBCs and liver function tests performed throughout the length of being on the medication. Ethosuximide is a medication used for patients to help prevent petite mal seizures. Phenobarbital is a depressant of the central nervous system. It's often used for the treatment of epileptic patients as well as sedation. Phenytoin is a common drug used for the treatment of seizures. Phenytoin can uh, lead the, to the patient having elevated liver enzymes. So liver enzymes need to be tested on the patient throughout the course of their medication. Valproic acid is another anti-epileptic medication used for the, pre pre the prevention of seizures. Bronchodilators are a type of medication that make breathing easier by relaxing the muscles in the lungs and widening the airways or the bronchi. Theophylline is a bronchodilator medication used to treat difficulty breathing, 
wheezing, and shortness of breath. It's commonly used in patients with asthma and emphysema, and also those who are affected by chronic bronchitis. So you've all learned about antibiotics in your microbiology course. Uh, aminoglycosides, such as vancomycin, are antibiotics that treat gram-negative bacterial infections that have resistance to other less toxic antibiotics. So these are strong medications given either intravenously through IV or intramuscularly IM. Due to their toxicity, aminoglycosides require peak and trough levels throughout the length of treatment. Chloramphenicol is an antibiotic that prevents the synthesis of proteins in numerous bacterial types. It's important for the levels of this antibiotic to be regularly checked because it can be toxic to the patient's bone marrow. So on this particular uh, picture here, um, this is a recap for uh, micro, so it's always good to review things. So this is a gram stain of bacteria. So this looks like a Staphylococcus bacteria, so it's a gram-positive cocci in clusters. Uh, so it's Staph because it, it's, of course, purple, they're circular, so they're cocci, and they're in clusters. If these were in chains, it would, it would be a Streptococcus species. And then also we have, what are these here, these pink ones? So these are gram-negative rods, right? So two different types of bacteria. So this is a, is a nice, actually a nice uh, representation of a gram stain. Psychoactive drugs are substances that change nervous system function and result in alterations in perception, mood, consciousness, cognition, or behavior. Examples of tricyclic antidepressants are amitriptyline, nortriptyline, and protriptyline. These antidepressants block the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain. These drugs treat depression, but can also be used for the treatment of ADHD, insomnia, and loss of libido. Lithium is a psychoactive drug that treats manic depression, which is also called bipolar disorder. Toxicity of lithium can cause seizures and coma, so it's very important for patients who are being treated with this medication get their levels of lithium checked regularly. Immunosuppressant drugs are used to inhibit or prevent the activity of the body's immune system. Cyclosporin suppresses cell-mediated host rejection of transplanted tissues or organs. A whole blood sample is necessary for the testing of this drug. Tacrolimus is a newer immunosuppressant that works similarly to cyclosporin, but is significantly more potent. Cyrolimus is an antifungal drug that has immunosuppressive activity. It is used for immunosuppression in patients who have received a kidney and a kidney transplant. Most of the chemotherapeutic drugs do not have TDMs ordered. And this is mainly because there is not a proven relationship between the concentration of the drug in the blood and its therapeutic benefit. Methotrexate works to inhibit the synthesis of DNA. In addition to chemotherapy, it can also be used for patients that suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so that concludes our lecture on TDM. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more educational laboratory content. And as always, if you have any questions or comments about this lecture or have any suggestions on other uh, topics that I, you would like me to cover, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Until next time.